what concerned me, I'd like to know if you share this point of view, not only do we have an increasing percentage of people that are old and a smaller workforce to support them and the economic strains that generates, but we have this surge, like a tsunami coming to our shores because of this baby boom phenomenon, I guess about 76 million Americans, all resulting from soldiers returning home after World War II, which I also understand is shared by other countries. Isn't that true? Like That's right, Japan, across the board. It carried a little bit in terms of when they were fighting, but all of them right. had a baby boom. Yeah. So what? how much does that aggravate the problem? Is that a incremental aggravation of the problem, or does that you know, multiply it? two times or, or more. You know, everybody should, as soon as this video is over, uh, do a Google or Bing search, look up CBO Congressional Budget Office 2017 long-term budget forecast, because the CBO gets it. They are saying there is one driver of debt deficit in the United States. Only one aspect of the budget is increasing in proportion to the total, and that's driven by age-related disease. You know, the last five years of, of a patient's life, they spend half of the, the entire medical budget of their life. So what we have is more and more people entering into that. They haven't saved enough in the meantime. So um, the CBO's report is really quite dramatic, and it's very measured. And policy wonks always sort of try not to be too extreme, but this report is unique in, in its stridency. It is saying they paint a scenario where as this continues, we're going to reach a point where the US government can't borrow the money that it is now borrowing to take care of the aged, simply because we'll become a bad credit risk. They're, they're not giving a date, but they're saying by uh, 2030, things will be dire. I think it will happen before then. The people who, who buy our debt uh, are going to be asking some pretty hard questions. So um, this is this is not a, a marginal thing at all. This is an existential crisis for not just America but the Western civilization as a whole. If we can't take care of our old people, I mean, you've seen what's happened in Greece. You know, all of the all of the cuts to the benefits that have been promised to the older generation has had a devastating effect on the entire society. People are dying young. I mean, if you want to go farther, look at Venezuela. I, we don't know how bad it's going to get, but this is not a small thing. The U.S. government has never been bankrupt. And that's what we will be, at which point this aging debt makes it clear to uh, foreign borrowers that, uh, lenders actually, the, the, we're not going to pay back those debts. But there's going to be haircuts, there's going to be defaults, and then they're going to raise the rates. Our ability to spend, to pursue other objectives is crippled. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've made fun of the doom and bloomers my whole life. I really have. I made fun of peak oil. I made fun of many things that other people were saying were going to bring us down. But all this time, this enormous, these enormous demographic forces have been continually building while well, politicians kick the can, the only solution to this is to take people out of the dependence column, put them into the contributors column, and therefore not only balance the budget, budget but run surpluses that will create the jobs for the millennials, it will restore economic growth to prior levels, and, uh, and all these other technologies that we're seeing coming will then be enabled. I, th I think there is a glorious future, but it depends on anti-aging medicine. And I think that will happen because it's now beginning to become evident to the baby boom generation that there are solutions. They're being denied them because of an obsolete regulatory system. And you know it. Essentially what we have inherited, 19th, 20th century medical philosophy is, okay, get a disease, then we'll approve something that hopefully will help. You know? But every car mechanic will tell you it's cheaper and easier to look out for that problem and fix it before it happens. That's what anti-aging medicine is about. You know, as logical as what you said is, not everyone agrees. And when I talk to individuals about our ability, you know, science and medicine's ability to 
really amazing things and reset the clock of aging in cells and so on. Um, they say, well, I don't know that that's a good thing. And um, I think what many people are imagining are new medical technologies that extend lifespan at the expense of health span. So more years on a respirator, Clearly. basically. And what's so ironic is, maybe it's just an example of poor communication on the part of medical researchers, is that's it's, it's exactly what we're not trying to do. Right. What we're trying to do is eliminate the chronic degenerative disease to allow people to be, as you say, productive, certainly not a drain uh, on the economy. But that message is out there. Scientists have been saying that for some time. Uh, you know, leaders at the National Institutes of Health and the American Medical Association have been advocates saying that's what medical research is. That's the world we're trying to, to bring into being. Why do we still have the critics? Why are the Leon Casses of the world saying we're treading on a path no one should ever go? Do you, have, do you have an opinion, based on economics at least? Um, no, I don't think it's an economic um, problem. I think it's a psychological problem. I, I, I think people are afraid to hope. You know, we're, we're oddly, if, if you do the research, you'll find out that nobody estimates how long they're going to live correctly. We all invest based on our parents' lives, but we're outliving our parents substantially. So people don't really know how things have changed since 1900 when life expectancy was 43 or something. Can so you, Can you imagine yourself left to be 150 or 200 years old? That's the problem, isn't it? it is, we lack the imagination to understand that we're on the crux of the most remarkable technological breakthroughs in history. I often quote Freeman Dyson, who you know, he knew von Neumann, worked with, Edward Teller, uh, all of the greats of the last century. And he's saying that as fast as that happened in IT, phones, self-driving cars, you know, the internet, uh, he says it's happening faster behind the scenes in biotechnology. Everybody's gonna be surprised by how quickly these things happen. So, you know, we're just not good at, at, at change, frankly. There's the, the Heraclitus, the Greek philo weeping philosopher who he blamed everything on the inability of human beings to imagine change. And right now we suffer from that. So some years ago we took some cells from your arm, some skin cells, right. and literally took them back in biological time, resetting the clock of aging, making them what you had when you were born, right. and then making beating heart muscle cells uh, from your own skin cells. I have video of that on, the, uh, on when, YouTube. When you were born. Yes. Did you ever imagine when you were younger that you would see such a technology in your lifetime? I was the first person ever to see that. You saw it coming. So, <laughs> well, no, I was the first person to see my own rejuvenated cardiomyocytes beating in a dish right. in, in the world. But no, um, I mean, once I, once I started actually paying attention to the science, um, then it became evident to me that I had severely underestimated the rate of change. And that was what was interesting to me. There was nothing boring about biotech today. You know, when, uh, when I was young, uh, you remember the cartoon, The Jetsons? So it, it imagined a future in which all these robots were cleaning your house and so on. Ironically, something that, you know, and or the, the flying cars that drove up to their house, uh, things that still have not been implemented technologically, but yet other things, far beyond our ability to imagine, uh, do come to fruition. And so, as amazing as it sounds, I think the, the ability to intervene in aging, which we, you don't even see uh, in science fiction like Star Trek, That's out in the year 2300, true. That's true. I think will, will totally happen in, in many respects within the lifetime of many now living but we might not still have the robots uh, cleaning the floor of the kitchen. So I think we'll have the robots, but, but I think that that failure of science fiction, and I've always been interested in science fiction, also reflects that psychological resistance to much longer lifespans. And I know your project ITR is not just slowing down aging for a little while. It's actually much longer lifespans. Uh, I just, 
think that that's so outside of the experience of human beings from the beginning of recorded history that it's, it's difficult to imagine anything that different taking place. So, but I think it's beginning to change. Certainly the Silicon Valley billionaires seem to get it. I mean, you're seeing dedication to anti-aging, dedication, dedication to doing away with death by disease. Uh, I think that's a really positive sign. So what do you see going forward? What do, you, what do you think? Where do you think we'll be 20, 25 years from now? Well, my favorite economist is Joseph Schumpeter. And he's the father of business cycles. But he wasn't talking about national recessions and depressions of that sort of thing. The cycles he looked at were industrial, which is that what we see throughout history is an industry becomes established, and then its concern is maintaining itself. Behind the scenes, you have innovators who are coming up with better solutions. Schumpeter, by the way, gives all the credit for social progress to what he called innovators and risk takers, which is scientists and investors, and I agree with that entirely. It, it, for this to be cured, it requires investors to find important technologies and enable those technologies to be implemented and hopefully make a lot of money in the process. But Schumpeter said, Nobody ever expects it, but these old industries will suddenly collapse. The, the gales of creative destruction will come through and just clean the table. People will be panicked, people will be terrified, but there will also be huge opportunities. People will step in and, and fill that void. I expect that to happen much sooner than most people expect it. I, I hope that the day comes uh, in the lifetime of many now living when uh, we look back at uh, the year 2017 and wonder why the whole world didn't realize how important this science could be for not only for society and, and the economic trends, but for us all as individuals. I agree. I hope we look back at it from 100 or more years from now. Yeah, exactly. See you at your 150th birthday. Indeed. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Mike.